The cyber infrastructure includes not just the hardware and software, but the people and the efforts of everybody to contribute to the needs of the scientists. The first issue is just the massive quantity of data. We have these sensors recording multiple variables every five minutes, add that up over nine stations over the course of a year, and you're talking hundreds of thousands of data points. A project um, 30 years ago might have a few hundred or a few thousand data points. We're now generating hundreds and thousands of data points for a project within, you know, minutes or a few hours. We need to be able to capture those data streams, apply quality control algorithms, analyze those data streams, and then archive them. And um, the data streams are so large that that's becoming almost in and of itself uh, a feed or a need in, in computer science. Our, our main goal is to make data available. And so our networking research here actually plays a key role in the sense of how do we get that data to users effectively. There are a variety of different, different issues that can uh, cause the sensors not to transmit the data the way you'd expect, particularly out in Montana where the temperatures can be very cold. Uh, they can get frosted over or ice on them uh, that can impede their performance. The range of the transmission is also difficult. Uh, we've also looked at other technologies, some of them being cell phone technologies. The scientists here at Kentucky decided to do mobile applications to try to enable them to not only gather the data from the sensors sitting at their desk on their iPhone or their iPad or wherever they were instead of having to trudge out in the field to get this data. We used a lot of software engineering techniques and tools to actually create a design that was extensible and that allowed for modifications of the systems as, as we move forward. What we need to do is go beyond publishing. What we need to do is add the ability to manage the data itself. 